we're going to keep um, taking the generative patch I started analyzing last in the last video. We're going to look at this uh, sap patcher here, which generates um, stochastic rhythms for each measures ba based on a probability table. And the first slider gives me the um, probability of getting a whole note, the second slider, a half note, quarter note, uh, 16, um, eighth note, 16 note, and 32nd note. The object that I'm using there is a night table. The night table looks like a, a multi slider, but it is different. Uh, one of its function is that whenever I send a bang into uh, the in its uh, inlet, its uh, left inlet, I will get an index and the index that I get is is based on the probability given me by these sliders. So this is my mm, the function that I'm going to call over and over again. Every time I call the i table, I will need to check where I am in the measure, whether I am close to the edge or I'm still uh, I have room to add more values uh, because I want the exact amount of values that will fill the measure. So to do that, I have to use a process that in computer science goes under the name of recursion. Recursion is the idea of having a function calling itself. Since this process could virtually go on forever, I need to have a condition within the function that lets me stop the process whenever some condition is met. So this is uh, done usually in code, but uh, we can do it in Max as well. Uh, maybe it will help to have a uh, pseudocode to just uh, see how the whole function works, and then we can implement it in Max. So uh, if I have my recursive function with uh, an input of x, then uh, I can calculate, first of all, I can calculate a, a, a another value, and my value will be my i table. So um, then once I um, get my value from the i table, I can check whether that value is, um, is less than uh, the remaining part of the measure. So if uh, y um, is less or equal to um, my minimum value, then uh, what I can do is, is push uh, this value into my array, my final array, which will be my output. Um, and I will use a pseudo Python Python-esque uh, syntax. So I will push y into my array, and then I will uh, I will need to call my function again. But this time I will uh, subtract uh, the y value to uh, my uh, x. So x is uh, is what remains of the of the of the measure to be. Uh, filled. So if this uh, condition is not true, then I need to return the array. Okay, let's see how we can do this uh, in Max. So here I have uh, my i table with five sliders, the first one being a whole note, uh, the second one being a half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, and thirty-second note. As I get my values from my i table, I want to keep track of where I am in the measure. And that for that, I'm going to use an accum object. If I do 32 minus um, my accumulated values, I will have uh, what remains in the measure. If, I, if this condition is true, then I can uh, create another trigger. And I want to first collect this uh, value into my array. Uh, so the my array will be the ZL group, which is the max uh, object to do collections. Of course, we do this in with Bach, but for now we're keeping it into normal max objects. And crucially, I need to call this function again 
and I like to uh, color these cables in a way that it's evident that I have a recursive process here. If this condition is not true, then I can output the whole thing. Whenever I get a value that is more than uh, what remains of the measure, then I could stop uh, the, the recursive process. But in that case, I might get a lot of emptiness at the end of the measure or longer values. In order to get more granular towards the end of the measure, when I get close to the edge, I can enter another condition. And that condition is realized here. So um, in case this value is less than a minimal value, um, then I can go ahead and output everything, including what remains of the measure. So I will have a value that occupies um, as long as the what remains of the measure. If it's more than the minimal value, I can keep going in my loop and refeed the remainder of the measure into the accumulator, which will reset to the value that I'm outputting here, and then start the recursive process again. The value that I decided to use is the one with the highest slider in my I table. Um, so what I need to do is to group all of these values, find out what the maximum is, and then use that value as my minimal value at the end. I can check the value, the sum will always be uh, 32, but I get more value, more smaller values at the end. So what remains in the patch that you, you'll find uh, on GitHub is uh, this part with uh, a way of grouping and finding what the maximum slider is. Um, and I'll leave that for you to explore. The iTable has does not have a different outlet for the dump message, which makes things a little more complicated. Um, and that's why I had to do a workaround uh, to find out what the maximum value is. And lastly, what I have here is a way of parsing through the list, of what's coming out of this, of my recursive process, and have a slider control whether the value is gonna be negative or positive. And if it's negative, I can use it as a rest value for the box, box score. So the last thing I need to do is to set a ratio uh, value. And this is dependent on my subdivision. So, and in particular on the smallest subdivision, you can express everything in 30 seconds for a subdivision or two. And then the, the, ratio will be uh, simplified by the uh, back expert. So I can see how the back expert is taking care of simplifying the values. So what I need to do is simply to have the smallest value connected to my um, the, the back expert to get correct denominator for my operation. And uh, you will see in the um, in the final patch uh, that um, there are there are ways to change the subdivision, and that should be pretty intuitive. Um, I can uh, answer questions in comments if you have any. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll let's stop here, and next time we're gonna look at how to um, make collection of pitches based on durations and in particular how to uh, take a collection of durations and correctly form a list of pitches. So we'll dive into list hierarchies and um, how to build lists for box score. I've seen some uh, questions on, um, on the Facebook group, on the Maximus P Facebook group about uh, how to build lists for a box score. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and I'll try to, to make a video in the next week or so. Subscribe and tick the bell for notification. Thank you for watching.